Hello all and welcome to another episode of Your One Black Friend. I am your hostess, Jolie. You can call me Joe. So this week we're going to have a discussion as to what it is to truly know. Is it possible for someone to truly know a thing? Is it possible for any of us to actually know? Now I've talked about this a couple of episodes, like here and there, not like focused on knowledge, but I've mentioned the quote by philosopher and thinker Socrates, right? One of his quotes is that all I know is that I know nothing. I used to be perplexed at that thought, at the idea of it, trying to understand how could one of the wisest men throughout history claim to not really know anything. But then as I got older, I started to realize that there is a lot of truth to that. What do we really know? The other idea is that if you think you know something, right, that belief in knowledge can absolutely blind you from perceiving and seeing things that could be right in front of your eyes. I talked about this a couple episodes ago regarding the book, The Unseen Realm, and the author of that book. Long story short, the author wrote wrote a book presenting evidence in regards to certain translations in the Old Testament. And this is not going to be a religious episode. I just want to kind of reference the book because I kind of raged on it a little bit. Didn't mean to, but I got my feathers a bit rustled because he was stating evidence and then directly contradicting the evidence that he had stated because he wanted it to fit into a belief, into a belief system. And that he did that throughout the entire book. What I've noticed or what I've always said is that an author is an authority figure in the information that she presents, right? So when I read a book, I always listen or read critically because I understand that when a a writer is presenting information, they're also presenting an idea, a belief system that they want me to take in. And so if you passively read, even though reading is good for the mind, if you passively read, To me, in my opinion, it's no different than just passively accepting information that you hear, right? When you read, you're just, it's just a voice in your head that's saying the words to you, which is why I prefer Audible because it's just removes the middleman. Instead of me sitting and looking at the pages, I can have a voice telling me the exact same information. So at the end of the day, whether you're listening to a voice in your head as you're reading or you're listening to you know, an audible or whatever, an audio book, it's still listening, right? So get information however you see fit. The point of what that I'm trying to make here is that an authority figure, an author is an authority figure for however long you are listening or reading their works, right? And with every authority figure, it benefits you to maybe just listen critically and not just accept what it is that they're presenting to you. So I do that every time I listen to a book or I read a book. I kind of challenge what it is that they're saying. And not it's not done intentionally, right? You notice this, for example, with like mystery books. When you read a mystery book or even when you watch a show, remember that shows, TV shows we watch are just visual representation of written word, right? It's still writing. It's still an author telling you the story or a group of authors telling you the story. Sometimes they tell the story in a particular way to trick their audience, right? That's what makes it a mystery. Um, and so they'll redirect you into one different, <laughs> one particular perception and then they'll bring up a new character and then all of a sudden it's like, well, I didn't see that coming. Well, yes, you were intentionally led in a particular way by the author who was shaping your reality experience as you're reading this book only to pop up with some more details at the end that you didn't see it coming. That's kind of the fun of listening or reading mystery or science fiction or any sort of thriller, things like that. You can't figure it out, but it's intentional. The author is sort of misdirecting you so that you don't figure it out and you keep on reading unless you're like super, super astute. Um, And sometimes like some people are like that, like they'll read like the first few (laughs) few sentences of a story and then go, I know who did it, right? So unless you're that kind of person, typically, the author controls your perception of reality for the four hours, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours or whatever you're reading this book until the big reveal, right? So it's a very controlled um, narrative. It's a very controlled experience. It's almost like magic, right? They want you, they, they paint a picture that your mind sees 
until they're ready to reveal something to you. And they'll lead you down all of these probable reality experiences as you read their book until they present the one or they collapse the one probable reality that they laid out for you all along. And then they go, boom, Eureka, that's it, right? The same thing, though, happens with our reality. The way we perceive our world, the way we perceive our society, the way we perceive reality has been shaped from birth by authors, authority figures, right? So there's a lot of things that we think we know, right? I wrote this down. Um, <laughs> we're coasting. I want, I want to make sure I remember this. We're coasting. A lot of us are coasting on false knowledge. A lot of us are coasting on outdated knowledge. And a lot of us are coasting on belief system that's just painted to seem like knowledge. And all of the above, we end up perceiving reality in a particular way. So if you are raised to believe, for example, that there's only seven continents and that humanity is the only intelligent species on this planet, right? And that an intelligent species can only present in humanoid form and that's it. Unless you challenge that, unless you go, okay, yes, that's, that's, that may be true, but what if that's not true? You can live 60, 70 years and have no idea what's really going on on this planet. You wouldn't even begin to think outside the knowledge box that has been created for you, told to you, embedded into your mind by people that you'll never meet, have never met but people who it benefits for you to perceive reality a particular way. Case in point, right now I sit in front of you and I'm wearing a cotton tie, cotton undershirt. This is 100% cotton and my pants are cotton as well. The reason why I'm doing that is because as of, it's been two weeks, about a week and a half ago, I had a conversation with a friend of mine and she mentioned like, she doesn't wear clothes that aren't like 100% cotton. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And she was like, yeah, because it's just better for my skin. And I thought, well, that's, you know, that's not bad. I didn't really deep it until I thought about it. And she was like, well, a lot of the stuff that we wear isn't breathable. In fact, a lot of stuff that we wear is borderline toxic. And I thank her for not pushing me beyond that point in the sense of like, I think you should do this. She just presented the information. And as soon as I heard it, being the person that I am, I started to sort of do a deep dive. And the clothes that I had on when she had mentioned it to me were like polyester. So I had like polyester sweatpants. I didn't know they were polyester. I assumed they had to be some sort of like cotton blend or something like that because they were sweatpants. Like under normal circumstances, when you think of sweatpants, you know that it's going to be something that's absorbent, something that's breathable, something that, you know, like will absorb whatever while you work out, right? Didn't put two and two together. I put, I picked up the pants, not the ones that I was wearing, but I had other pair or whatever. And I went to check my closet and I looked and turned the label. It was a hundred percent polyester. Now that didn't make any sense to me. Why would sweatpants be polyester? And what exactly is polyester? That was my next train of thought. And so I hit up the good old internet and typed in, well, actually I asked Siri, I said, hey Siri, what is polyester made of? And Siri said, it is made of water, coal, petroleum, and air. So the two things that don't mean anything to me right now are water and petrol i'm sorry water and air the two things that i really needed them to lead with was coal and petroleum that is plastic for those of you who don't know plastic is made is a petroleum byproduct it's made out of like petroleum oil that that's what plastic is and that's what i've been sitting in for years right like when i paint i usually put, throw on a pair of sweatpants i don't want to get you know, paint on my regular clothes or whatever, but that's, I sit for hours in the stuff. My skin's not breathing. To me, there's no difference than taking my legs and wrapping them with cellophane plastic, with like one of them like saran plastic wraps. I panicked. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really panic, but I was like, holy shit. It was like another mind blowing sort of experience. And I was like, wait, what's going on? So then I went and looked through my closet, she mentioned Lululemon. We were kind of walking around at the time and she was like, everybody's like wearing Lululemon. They think that shit's healthy because that shit's marketed. 
this world. That shit is marketed to people who are health conscious. So we everywhere we looked, people were walking around with like workout gear. Plastic, plastic, plastic. It's all plastic. It's all plastic. It's a synthetic thing that they can make in a lab with a bunch of chemicals. And then that just sits on your skin. Now, let me tell you guys something. Your skin, as you know, is your largest organ. It is an organ. Okay. And anything you put in and on it, it will absorb and becomes a part of you. And we don't think necessarily that the things that sit on our skin matter because they're somehow they're outside. So we feel that they're safe. But if you put a drop of water on your body, it's going to go in. You put oil in your body, it's going to get absorbed. If you put mineral oil in your body, mineral oil is plastic. It's a petroleum like waste product, if we're being completely honest. So it's petroleum jelly. The shit that they market to babies, baby oil is liquid plastic. I'll say that again. You don't have to believe me. Look it up. Ask what baby oil is made of. It's mineral oil. It's not a mineral in the way you think of it. It is petroleum, petrolatum, which is a is basically it's liquid plastic. Here's the Google. Is baby oil plastic? Just looked it up. Baby oil is made of synthetic mineral oil that is refined until it is safe to use on the skin. Safe by whose standards? It is made in a lab out of petroleum products, just as other synthetic products are made. Here's another one. Mineral oil, most often mineral oil is a liquid obtained from refining crude oil to make gasoline and often, (laughs) and other petroleum products. Mineral oils are used for lubrication, et cetera, et cetera. That was from Wikipedia. Let's go to cancer.gov. The name mineral oil has been used to describe many colorless, odorless liquids. Most often, the term refers to a liquid byproduct of the distillation of petroleum to produce gasoline and other petroleum-based products from crude oil. These oils, including lubricant-based oils and products derived from them, are used in manufacturing, mining, constructing, and other industries. Which cancers are associated with exposure to mineral oils? Exposure to mineral oils is strongly associated with an increased risk of non-melanoma skin cancer, particularly of the scrotum. Mineral oil, in case you're wondering why I'm reading about mineral oil, if you get a bottle of baby oil and you turn it around, it says mineral oil. That is what they market to people's children. I am not making it up. It's a petroleum distillate. And they market it to babies. How many people slather Vaseline on their body, on their skin, and they think that they're hydrating the body? It's liquid plastic. Okay? That's just aside. Like, I just just put that aside. If you are presently using mineral oil on a day-to-day basis, I'm not going to tell you to stop because I, I can't, I'm not, I guess, I don't even know how we're supposed to communicate this sort of information. I'm just going to say, like, I would not advise that you do that. You shouldn't be applying any sort of petroleum-based products directly into your largest organs. If you wouldn't pour this shit on your heart every day or on your liver every day, and I get those are internal, your eyes, if you wouldn't put mineral oil into your eyes every day or into your ears, don't put it on your skin. I have read this to you. I wouldn't recommend that you continue to do that. Now, what is polyester made of? As I said, coal and petroleum. I'll read it off Google. Okay. Actually, before I jump ahead to polyester, let's stick with the skin oil and Vaseline. It's interesting how Vaseline sound an awful lot like gasoline, and that's because it is. Here we go. What is the difference between Vaseline and petroleum jelly? Petroleum jelly is marketed under the name Vaseline. Petroleum jelly is created from refined crude oil and applied topically or as a lubricant. 
Vaseline is essentially petroleum jelly manufactured and sold by the American business Johnson and Johnson. This is from avacaremedical.com. Now just to round it all up, I looked up what is petroleum. Petroleum is a liquid mixture that is present in certain rock strata that can be extracted and refined to produce fuels, including gasoline, kerosene, and diesel oil. Petroleum is a fossil fuel. It's also called crude oil. Okay, so anything that is mineral oil, petroleum, petrolatum, paraf- anything that sounds like that, it's straight up crude oil. Like they don't give a fuck. Excuse my language. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about people. They don't give a fuck about people. And that's what, so now they, they, they've taken, think about, think about what kind of world we have to live in where this stuff, the byproduct of crude oil is marketed to babies for you to use day to day on your skin. I read it from cancer.gov. It's not that they don't know that this stuff is bad for you. I, I, I don't know why there isn't a recall, but you could pick up your phone and go on the internet and do the searches yourself. How many people you know are just slathering the stuff on their skin? I personally have not used lotion in over 20 years probably. I just use natural oils. I use apricot kernel oil right as I get out of the shower. That's enough for me. That's enough for me. My face cream is like a goat milk MSM combination that I get from a local farm. Uh, And that's it. And my body wash is Castile soap, Dr. Bronner's. I'm actually going to switch away from that and just start using African, good old fashioned African black soap. Think about what kind of world we're living in where they market this shit to people, knowing damn well that these are waste products that are toxic to the organs or toxic to the skin and your body's going to absorb it. You're, they're telling you rub this shit on your body every day and people are doing it. You put that on your lips, you put it, this is your largest organ. This is your, this is an organ. This is an organ outside. So you should really be mindful of the things that you're putting on your skin. Now to go back, I'll say that again, cause I lean away from the mic. You should really be mindful of the things that you're putting on your skin. If you wouldn't drink this stuff, you probably shouldn't put it on your body. Like and I know some people actually drink mineral oil. Please don't. And they, they, they market it. They market it as a laxative. And the only, lax, the, only, the only reason why it has a laxative effect is not because of anything that it's inherent to mineral oil. Like you can drink MCT oil and it will produce, produce the same effect. It's just the fact that it's an emollient and it just allows for things to move through. That shit is toxic. Straight up toxic. We talked about petroleum. We talked about polyester. What is nylon made from? We give it a Google. Nylon is a generic designation for a family of synthetic polymers composed of polyamides. That sounds cool, right? Okay. Nylon is a silk-like thermoplastic. It's plastic, guys. Generally made from petroleum. That can be melt processed into fibers, films, or shapes. It goes on. (sighs) Look around your house. It's plastic fucking everywhere. (sighs) All right. Polyester. What is polyester? This is from apexmills.com. Polyester is a synthetic or man-made fiber material shortened from its technical name, polyethylene telephthalate, phthalate, P-H. T H A L A T E or P E T. Does that sound plasticky to you? Here's another one from soport.com. They're a little bit more straightforward. And they just straight up say polyester is a synthetic fabric that's usually derived from petroleum. Let's go back to the other word polyester telephthalate. Can't say it. Telephthalate. I don't know why they do all that. Obviously, I do, is to confuse people, right? to hide what it actually is behind other 
fancy word so people stop thinking. So I'm going to just look up polyethylene. Polyethylene or polythene is the most commonly produced plastic. It's plastic. Okay. Here's another one. If you look up what is polyethylene telephthalate, right? The first thing that pops up is container and packaging. The what is plastic series, polyethylene telephthalate, and then it tells you what it is. And then right below that is 100% recyclable PET plastic, plastic made to be remade. Our PET bottles are designed to be used and remade as your clothes, I'm assuming. <laughs> It's not funny. It's not funny because we wear this every day. I am very cautious of what I put in my body, right? I'm very mindful of the water I drink, right? Reverse osmosis. Add a little bit of sea salt to it. I never once thought to look up what's on the tag of my clothes, what I was putting on my body. Because I'm always cold also. So I'm always wearing like sweaters and hoodies and things like that. As you guys have seen. Right? I'm always in a hoodie. I'm always in a long sleeve. This, like I said, is 100% cotton. I've since learned the error of my ways. But this stuff is what is sitting on our skin 24-7. Some people sleep in pajamas that are 100% plastic. If you're not mindful, if you're not conscious of this stuff, 100% of your life you are suffocating in plastic. Imagine you get up in the morning and you go and you take a, a bath or whatever with some sort of like Johnson & Johnson shampoo or body wash that has like phthalates in it. That's plastic. That's going to like all they keep saying that the people have microplastics like en endocrine disruptors in their body, like hormonal imbalance. That's like things that cause a hormonal imbalance. Like we have it in our bodies forever plastics. Right. And they have us focusing on things like I think the last one was simply orange, orange juice and the blast. Like we're all busy chasing. OK, I don't want this like number seven plastic anymore. Like number seven plastic. That's the that's the dangerous one. N number five is OK. It's still plastic. It's still leaching microplastics into our foods. It's still leaching into our water. Then we go and we drink this stuff. Right. So imagine you go and you take a shower. I'm assuming you don't have a filter on your shower. I sure as hell don't. I will at some point now that I'm, I'm, I'm aware. But you go and take a shower. There's microplastics in your water if you're not filtering it out. Right. If you're drinking it and then you're peeing it, it's going into water supply and you're bathing in it. That's that's how it works. Unless you have a filter. Right. Then you get out of the shower. You coat your skin with plastic. If you if you're using Vaseline or mineral oil. That's plastic. You're literally coating your skin in liquid plastic. Then you go and you put on your hoodie, your polyester hoodie, and your polyester pants, your dress pants, your button-up shirt. That's on top of that, some weird polyester nylon. It's just double blend, which I've read actually that any kind of blend, it's on the internet, any kind of blend, any kind of fabric blend, it's not like 100% like cotton, for example, or hemp or linen. Sometimes linen's a bit iffy. The other two is what I've learned are okay. Bamboo also sometimes a bit iffy because they've now figured out a way to like turn bamboo to fabric, but there's something called like viscose or something like that. I'm not saying it right, but they it's actually not as green as they market it to be. They use a lot of chemicals that are really bad for the environment and your skin as well. So you, you're better off just leaning this way. I don't know what's just wrong with cotton. You know, maybe we just rock the cotton, guys. Like, anyway, so you, this is, here's the story. So you take a shower in plastic. You get out, rub plastic on your body, put on your plastic clothes, get in your plastic car, drive to work, drink your coffee that's coated in plastic, right? Eat your food that's packaged in plastic. <laughs> what the fuck kind of world are we living in, guys? And then you, you repeat the fucking cycle until something happens because clearly all this buildup is going to cause something to happen. The fact that we're all walking and talking right now and aren't completely falling apart is a testament to, to just how well constructed the body is because the toxins that we are unknowingly coating our bodies in, unknowingly coating our bodies in and drowning in is ridiculous. People think that this whole thing with oil, it just stops 
it just stops with just your car and gas. It's everything, everything. I'm surround this plastic, plastic, plastic. Like all of these newly constructed homes, they don't make things out of natural material anymore. So like your walls will be plastic. Your couch will be some sort of blended plastic. You lay down in your pillow that's plastic. You're breathing in. Yeah. My story. So back to my story. I was having issues sleeping and I had a fleece blanket. It sounds nice, right? Fleece. It feels soft. You're thinking fleece. It's you know like the fleece of a, of a lamb, right? Like, like it's fleece, wool. 100% polyester or some sort of weird fucked up blend that I'm just putting on my skin and allowing this shit to absorb into my body as I'm sleeping. I found a company, I think they're called like Authenticity 50 or something like that. They're based in the United States. The cotton is organic cotton and it's grown in the US. 100% I ordered it right away. Slept as soon as it came, came in, slept with it. Slept like a fucking baby. And when I woke up, my skin, I literally could feel my skin like, breathing <laughs> i talked to my husband like i know i had the head knowledge right like obviously your skin breathes but i was like does your skin breathe because i could literally feel like i could feel the air going into my skin like i could feel my skin breathing he's like yeah your skin breathes it's like your largest organ like we we know this we know we know this usually when i'm doing podcasts you can't see what i'm doing <laughs> You can see me doing this. This is what I'm usually doing when I'm recording. When I've just been doing an audio podcast, I'm usually very expensive. But we know. And for those of you who are used to podcasts, I just laugh because I don't want to cry. Um, but we know. We know this. We know that anything you put on your body can be absorbed. You know, something else I learned. Like we're seeing an increase in women that are having like polycystic ovarian syndromes, but we are also marketed tampons. You think about how fucked it is, fucked up it is to put plastic, to make tampons out of plastic and market it to young girls. Because not only is the, the applicator plastic, like everybody focuses on what they wanted to focus on. Oh, well, the applicator is plastic. Nobody focuses on the fact that like the fabric is also plastic. The fiber, the absorbent fiber, that's just plastic. And so you take that and you put it in your body for hours at a time like if you're changing like was it you go three four tampons a day that's that that's hours i hope you're not sleeping in a tampon but that's hours that you are now you've put plastic into your body and with the heat of your body at about 98 degrees think about that like think about like take a cup of water and put it in plastic and then just put it under a lamp that's 98 degrees and just le- and then just let that let that water sit with the lamp over the plastic cup and then just like just heat it up over time would you drink that clearly not because you know that the plastic will seep the heat will leach the plastic into the water you don't want to drink that but they market this to young girls as tampons and our liners have petroleum fiber whatever sort of poly whatever the fuck blend nylon bullshit that's not that's cheap fiber that they can make money out of that's not that's not even with some of these brands i noticed there was one brand i was getting and it said like organic cotton and then I looked, I only ordered it once, thank, thank goodness, but I looked closer when I went to go reorder and it said liner. So just the top of it was organic cotton. The bottom underneath it, it's still fucking plastic bullshit. I don't use TMI, but I don't use tampons. Um, But still, like that's something that's sitting against your body for seven days. But yeah, obviously you're changing it and that you just... I mean, the, even the the cups, right? That they advertise. If that if that's not, and they say, well, it's silicone. Some people are silicone, but you don't know. You don't know. I don't even. I almost want to look up what silicone is. Hold on. I looked up. Is silicone a type of plastic? Of course it is. Silicone can be considered a type of plastic. How much? How they market this stuff and they tell us it's safer than plastic because it doesn't fall under the technical definition of plastic but it's fucking plastic 
here we go. It's a synthetic polymer like plastic, but its chemical composition is different because it can be used to make malleable rubbery products. It's sometimes referred to as a synthetic rubber. So it's, it's, it's plastic. It says the difference between, and that was from sustainablejungle.com. It says the difference between silicone and plastic is the way they are manufactured. Silicone is more durable than plastic, but it's not as flexible. It's also more expensive, but it's essentially still a derivative of petroleum. It's just a different chemical composition. So you can't call it plastic so they can market it as something else. Now I think about the mat that I've put, my cookies that I've made for my child, and I've put it on a silicone mat because, well, it's supposed to be safer than, for example, aluminum, right? And we're just heating plastic into the food and eating it. Here's lifewithoutplastic.com. The, the plastics industry considers silicone a plastic, and so do we, regardless of how much green marketing, green washing, claiming it is not plastic. See, I knew, I knew silicone was safe. I knew silicone was not plastic. In my mind, I imagined some sort of natural, I don't know what the fuck I thought it was, but when I got silicone, it was marketed as an alternative to plastic, a safer alternative to plastic. What they do is they put up products and wait to be sued. That's it. It's like the Samsung thing, right? They just, oh, hey, we can take pictures of the moon. They can't actually take pictures of the moon. They just replace pictures of the moon with pictures of the moon that already existed that were taken with better lenses. And then they say the, the zoom on your camera is so powerful that you can take a picture of the moon. It's not true. They use AI to superimpose better pictures of the moon over the picture that you're taking in real time. It's false advertisement. Same thing with plastic number seven, right? They said, oh, it's just plastic seven that's not safe. Everything else is fine, right? And then so they just shift everybody down this corner and then you just wait a bit until like people fight 20 years later, you find actually plastic number one was dangerous, plastic number whatever the fuck, right? Everything is fucking plastic. So yeah, I knew silicone was safe. That was my knowledge that I had. And so I operated with a particular sort of mindset that, yeah, because I know that it's safe, it's just information. I didn't know shit. I didn't take the time to test this. Is it actually safe? Somebody told me some shit and I just accepted it. And as a result, when I cook, I'm doing with silicone something that I would never do with plastic, which is stir hot liquids with silicone, which just introduces melted plastic, microplastics into my food, into my family's food. That's the world we're fucking living in. That, that's it. This is where we are. What do we really know? You know, my friend and I were watching, um, actually, my, my friend and I with my family, we were all watching Soylent Green. We did a throwback, I think, Friday night movie night, and we watched Soylent Green terrible like terrible movie to watch in hindsight only because i think we're spoiled by modern <laughs> modern movies um and i also knew the ending like, i don't want to spoil it but like i also knew the ending i think my husband had spoiled it um but we were watching my friend and i were watching the women and the men so the men were a lot more like you could tell they had a lot more testosterone let's just say and the women also kind of had deeper voices as well like actually everybody <laughs> in the movie had kind of deeper voices or what would have been considered deeper by today's standards we're noticing something particularly in the west coast that a lot of men are starting to sound more and more effeminate and as you know or you may not know there is a link between estrogen and plastic in the sense that plastic has been shown to increase estrogen in the body all right, let's live look up plastics and estrogen. Here we go. BPA, the first thing that pops up, B BPA is a weak synthetic estrogen found in many rigid plastic products, food and formula, can linings, dental sealants, and on the shiny side of paper, cashier receipts. 
to stabilize the ink. You could, you could feel it. You could feel it. It's plastic, right? It's estrogen-like, so it mimics estrogen. It's estrogen-like activity makes it a hormone disruptor like many other chemicals in plastics. Here's another one. Uh, that was from uh, breastcancer.org. Here's another one. This is from NR dc.org. Here's the bad news. Synthetic chemicals and products like plastics and fragrances can mimic hormones and interfere with or disrupt the delicate endocrine dance. We're exposed to these chemicals daily and we're especially vulnerable to them during phases of accelerated development in utero and throughout childhood. Here's another one. Do microplastics affect estrogen? These findings demonstrate that MPs, microplastics, could increase the estrogenic effects on marine fish. Right. It goes on. Here's another one. NCBI.nlm.nih.gov. National this is the National Institutes of Health.gov. Most plastic products release most plastic products release estrogenic chemicals of potential health problems. Most plastic products release estrogenic chemicals. Right. Most plastics leach hormone-like chemicals. Once again, here's another one. That one's from NPR.org. Estrogenic chemicals often leach from BPA-free plastic products. This is Environmental Health Journal. It just goes on. Oxford Academic Editorial. Estrogens from plastics. Are we being exposed? Of course we are. Now, Think about what's going on. Think about everything I said about from polyester to the water that you're drinking to the things that you're putting in your body, the, the, like the lining. Remember they said that the, the receipt has that coating, but it's the same thing. Even though when they claim it's BPA free, there's something else that they're replacing because they don't stop to like repackage it, right? They don't go, hey, this thing has been shown to be dangerous. This plastic thing has been shown to be dangerous, like hormone disrupting. Maybe we shouldn't bottle stuff in plastic anymore. What they do instead is they just shift it. And instead they go, okay, well, this thing hasn't been proven to be cancer causing yet. There's, it probably is cancer causing. It probably does disrupt your, your hormones. It probably is, it probably does release estrogen mimicking chemicals into your body, which can increase cancer and decrease testosterone. It probably does all these things, but we, they haven't, proven it yet so we'll just continue to sell you this shit and greenwash it we'll label it as green as safe as healthy whatever the fuck right so you switch from this to this thinking you're doing something better for yourself this is coated in silicone now in silicone instead of plastic it's still plastic and then we think we're doing the right thing and we're still not this stuff is still leaking into leaching into our food so to go back to men like, and apologies if you're a man, but if you listen to like a, a lot of how men are talking now, the, now these days, like there's like, I don't want to say they sound like women, but they don't sound like how men used to sound back in the day. And it's funny because I've had people say like my voice is deep, but I don't have a deep voice. Like I just, this is just me talking. Maybe you have too much estrogen. Like I do things to reduce estrogen in my body because I've had a pre, I have a history of like a hormone related, I don't want to call it a cancer, but it was definitely a tumor. So I, re, they, I lost one of my ovaries when I was, was much younger. And so I have had to be very mindful of not being exposed to estrogen because anything that's estrogenic will increase the levels of estrogen in my body. This is a growth hormone. So I take a lot of like natural mushrooms. I eat a lot of mushrooms. I drink a lot of mushroom tea, a lot of mushroom coffee. I also take a lot of cruciferous vegetables, which you guys should be taking anyway, because the combination of those will reduce and balance. Maca is another one. Reduce estrogen in your body, right? Balance out your hormones. You need something to counter that. And so, yeah, my voice sounds this way, but it's because I don't have too much, or at least I, don't, I hope I don't. I'm doing everything in my power to reduce the impact of having too much estrogen coming from everywhere. And I'm not doing enough, to be perfectly honest, but over time, like I just, like I said last week, realized 
for somebody who's survived what I survived, like it, it bothers me that me going out of my way to avoid, like I don't drink milk. When soy milk was a big thing, I avoided that. Like I don't eat anything with soy because it's estrogenic. It increases, so it, it increases estrogen in your body. So does flax. So I don't consume that. I don't, I... but I remember when it was a big thing and everybody was drinking it because they touted it as something healthy, right? We know it's healthy for you. And then men started growing tits. Like, <laughs> it's not funny. It's fucked up. I just laugh because I don't know what else to do. And God knows what else we're doing that we're being told is good for us, that it's not. It's actually fucking up our system. What's going on? You really do need to take a step back. And I, I'm not going to tell you to challenge you know what? I'm going to tell you to challenge the things that you think you know. Because a lot of the stuff that we think we know are things that have been told to us by corporations who want to sell us a thing. We're consistently being misled. We're consistently being lied to. We know when you go to a university, especially if it's a state university, a lot of what you're being taught is not knowledge. It's programming. You just assume that because you have a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD, you're very knowledgeable and you know something you don't. You're just well-programmed by people who paid to have you believe a particular thing. I remember in grade school, we were taught that GMOs were good for you. But that was paid for by <laughs> big ag. That's what they put in our textbooks. And we grew up believing that that was true. If you asked me at a particular point, what I knew, I would have told you that's something that I know to be true. Genetically modified soy is good for you. Genetically modified corn is good for you. Genetically modified wheat is good for you because it blah, blah, blah. It's say it helps people in developing countries have food. But we've never had an issue with food. We've had a distribution issue. This was not necessary. It was just more cost efficient and allowed them to make more money by genetically modifying crops to be more resilient so that they can make more money, make more profits. Damn the health benefits. And here we are, thinking we know when we don't know. There's gonna come a time where there's going to emerge two economies. It's already emerging. And maybe you might be inspired to do something but there's going to come a line. It's We're seeing it now. It's a delineation from people who are essentially the workforce. And they're going to be marketed things that are increasingly going to be more and more synthetic. Right? Fake meat. Fake food. Whatever. Fake clothes. Fake fabric. Fake furniture. Plastic everything. And then there's going to be... The opposite end, which will be more and more wealthy people are going to realize, listen, I worked a lot to earn the money that I have. And I want to be able to enjoy my life. I just had this thought about the black sweater that Steve Jobs consistently wore. If that was cotton, he didn't know. If that was polyester, you don't think about that stuff. And he was a fruitarian. But who knows what other things were impacting his life that he didn't realize, that he thought he knew that he didn't know. So imagine being a billionaire and not realizing that like you're continuously with all the money in the world, but not the knowledge or what you know it's wrong. I heard something to the effect of like um, Kim Kardashian has or she suffers from um, eczema. But she's also consistently promoting clothes that are like polyester and nylon and synthetic fibers. And I'm not saying she's doing this maliciously. I'm saying that if she has eczema and she probably doesn't know. And a couple of times too, they always like post a thing. I'm not keeping up with this stuff on like intentionally. It just shows up on my feed because people I'm following watch this stuff. So, and I'm not on social media anymore. So this is based on like older knowledge. But you'd see her occasionally eating ice cream from McDonald's and like she's licking it. And I'm like, that's dairy. And who knows what those cows, what, what those cows are, have been injected with. And when you drink, like that's, that's how milk works guys. Right. You have to be very careful of the, the medication that you take 
as a mother, for example, because that gets passed on to your child through your milk. And then they inject these cows with God knows what. And then they use their milk, which is really disturbing when you think about it, but they use their milk to make dairy products and then you eat it or you put it in your coffee or you eat it in your ice cream or you bake with it or whatever. That doesn't go away, guys. They can ultra pasteurize it all you want to, but that pasteurization, that's just heating it. It's just heating it to kill the bacteria. It's not getting rid of the hormones that they've injected into it or all the other like antibiotics and all these other chemicals, growth hormones that they put into it to make it whatever. All this medication, that doesn't go away. If you're cautious about what you eat as a mother so you don't pass that on to your child, but then you go and you drink milk, there's a there's something's lost there. There's a discrepancy that we're not paying attention to, guys. There's a discrepancy that we're not being aware of because we're walking through life still relatively blind. And it's our job when we see things to make other people see what we see the moment we can see it. That's why I had to do this episode. Everything around me is plastic. I didn't realize it. I go and buy, you know, if you can go and buy like, um, I got, you know, workout stuff like that. I, I can't wear all this stuff anymore. If you can go and spend $3,000, $2,000 on a Louis Vuitton bag or whatever, or some, some plastic shoes that are coated with God knows what and releasing formaldehyde, which like I said, anything that's not 100% cotton is a formaldehyde release or anything that's not 100% like the natural product, they coat the shit with, with, with chemicals. They coat everything with chemicals so they look a particular way. Your paper towel that's coated with chemicals, toxins, like the stuff that you, your toilet paper, got to redo that like stuff you don't even think about just everywhere you go I'm not saying that you can be 100% clean but I'm saying that you can start making more conscious and by clean I mean like plastic free toxic free chemical free I'm just saying that you can make maybe more conscious moves and I used to I knew celery juice was good for you and so I would order from a local juice juicery but I always thought it was kind of weird that they delivered that shit in plastic because how are you saying this shit is healthy for me, but you're putting it in plastic, but I still did it in my mind. I just told myself, well, maybe it's a different type of plastic, right? I know I have the information, but I'm not applying the knowledge that that's a lack of wisdom. True wisdom can't be learning school you need to apply the shit that you know you need to you have internet you never think to look up what your clothes are made of that's a problem you have the internet you have the whole world in your hand you never think to look up what what the things that you're putting on your body is made of right that's a lack of wisdom some of the smartest people in the world are book smart well educated 15 degrees but that's just what is that that you know really like it wasn't until recently that I was like maybe I should just make my own fucking juice and I didn't even do it because it was like the healthy thing to do I just did it because like when it first came I saw the date and I was like it said it was expiring in like three months and I was like well this isn't fresh I know vitamin c breaks down within 24 hours so I'm just buying like green water to be honest I don't know when the shit was bottled I had the head knowledge and I was still doing the thing. That's not wisdom. That's just knowledge, accumulation of information. Now I make my own juice. Only once again within the last two weeks. I'm sharing with you this stuff. There's no shame. I'm a human being. I'm here with you. I'm sharing with you this stuff so that you guys don't feel bad. Like we're all doing stuff we don't realize that we're doing because we're operating on knowledge. Like we, we think that we think that we're protected. We're not as protected as we think we are. Like we think that if something wasn't, was toxic, it wouldn't be on the market, but that's just not true. Not even kind of the amount of poisons that are sold to us and marketed to us. Like for example, like relaxers that are sold to black women. It's the same, the the same active ingredients as drain cleaner, Drano. I'm not making this up. It's true. And it's marketed to us as a hair straightener. These are extensions. So, yeah. And my edges are nappy as shit. <laughs> like, I don't use it. What do we know? 
we're coasting on outdated knowledge. And even the knowledge that we think we have is not true knowledge. It's programming. Look around us. You know, my, my mother-in-law, she's been having like skin issues. And I talked to her about what my friend told me about, like maybe consider cotton. And she's 85. And she said to me, she was like, you know what, Joe, there was a time when nobody wore this polyester stuff. Everybody wore cotton. You just wore cotton. Um, remember she's 85 and she was like, and then we stopped paying attention. We knew cotton was better for us. And then we didn't. And I remember not that I'm old enough, but I do remember like in the seventies, these polyester suits were all the rave, but that's marketing. And so people were essentially conditioned to move, to move away from things that were better for them to something that would benefit a company. That's, that's the world that we live in. It's a corporation. We're on world. A lot of the things that we're doing, buying a diamond ring because a corporation told you that it's rare and that's just a thing that you do you know it's very important to go get to get your degree go to university but that's because it's very important for you to be programmed to think a particular way that's what we're being taught to do so all the things that you think you know it's because everybody else is doing it but everybody's doing something because that's what they've been programmed to do right now you guys have heard me kind of go on about social media I obviously one being involved in social media, a couple of articles popped up today. Um, I usually listen to, a, uh, or actually, I usually read the newsletter. It's like a daily newsletter from Robinhood. And I don't want to hear it for those of you who are like, oh, are you still using Robinhood? Yes, I am. Because I don't really have the time. But check this out. Listen to this. Snap. So Snapchat cut payouts for its TikTok-esque spotlight. So they cut paying producers, creators for what they were trying to mimic something that's similar to TikTok. So they lured a bunch of people into Snapchat, had them creating like essentially reels, right? And shorts, and then cut payment to the people who are producing stuff for them, producing videos for them, producing content for them, stop paying them, right? So they cut that um, several times last year. Meta last month, paused a monetization feature that paid creators for posting reels. Cut that, right? I talked about that. And TikTok's new creator fund isn't clear on its revenue sharing team, um, sharing terms. Now, you know, like TikTok, they're in China. They don't give a fuck. Like they'll tell you, oh, there's a fund. But if you, if they're not clear, then that basically means they can do whatever the fuck they want. And if there's no law against this, and there isn't right now, they can exploit the hell out of people. And that's exactly what they're doing. Check this out. Amazon's Twitch last week announced it would experiment with taking a cut from streamers brand sponsorship. So I create the content. I'm only using your platform to like broadcast myself. I'm drawing in views because of the content I'm creating. And now you want to take a cut from sponsorships that I've found. And you're a multi-billion dollar company. And you're literally taking money from children. You're taking children's hard-earned money that they're spending copious amounts of their lives on. I keep telling you guys, set up your own website. You can pay somebody on Fiverr. There's a guy that I use. If you're really interested, send me like send me an email. I will send you his information. He works a bit slow, but you guys will see the site when it's up. Hire a human being and create a website. If you don't have the money to pay somebody to build a site, he's not expensive, by the way. This person I mentioned to you. Um, and like, just do some searching. If you don't want to hire somebody, you can't afford to hire somebody right now. You can go online, go on YouTube. And there's several videos of how you can create your own website. There's also several platforms that allows you to do the same too, right? Like they are exploiting the hell out of people. They're treating them like slaves, right? Wake up. It's time for you to post. I got demonetized yesterday from you, from YouTube. Like they paused my demonetize my monetization because they wanted me to like verify my identity. But like no warning, just paused. I don't know what one had to do with another. And then when I like filled out whatever form they wanted me to fill out, then they sent, oh, now you're back to being monetized. And I'll go and make some more videos. Fuck you. Do, do you pay my bills? What is it for like 20 bucks that a month that I get? <laughs> like what is going on? But until there, there are laws against this kind of exploitation, right? Because if you're asking me to work for you, you're not, then you're basically saying that you're my employer then you should be paying me at least the minimum wage. I'm going to say this forever until the laws change. It's exploitation. And our fucking like lawmakers have their heads up their asses 
Like they're not moving. Like it's going to be five more years of this bullshit before somebody decides to put something forward to say, maybe we shouldn't allow people to be exploited like this by these companies. Imagine you are a newspaper, like a newspaper company or whatever, right? And you aren't hiring your writers. You're just saying, keep posting articles for us. And then maybe eventually somebody will want to sponsor your posts. No, like newspapers pay their writers for content. Like imagine you're a publishing house and you're saying, well, do you just keep writing books for us for free? We're going to sell these books and then maybe we'll give you a cut. Maybe, but maybe you'll get lucky and you'll get exposed and somebody will see your writing and then we'll want to pay for you to write something for them. That's what we're doing here. Clearly it's the same thing as if I owned a restaurant and I said, come and work for my restaurant. I'm not really on page any wages, but like, I'm going to pay you zero wages, but maybe if you do a really good job serving people, you'll get a tip. In California, at the very least, you have to pay the minimum wage. So if you're going to make me or you're crying me to work for you, and at this point in time, you can they can measure how much time you're spending, screen time, using these things. They should be paying for people's time. Wages. These companies make enough money. They're too busy trying to make an extra trillion dollars or whatever. How is this okay? How is it okay to just arbitrarily? People have a. Like they depend on these things now for income. And they just they just wake up one day and just cut things. And content creators have no like nowhere to turn to. You guys stop. Until we decide we're not going to do this shit anymore, they're going to keep exploiting. Like, there's nothing to stop that from happening unless we stop doing it. Or maybe don't support things that are exploitative. And maybe if you're spending copious amount of time, not as a creator, but as a consumer on these platforms that you know don't support your favorite content creator, maybe you're part of the problem. I know it's harsh. I know. I know. But it's true. Anybody that sees bad things happening and does nothing about it when you, it's in your power to do so, you're part of the problem. Look what happened with Substack and Twitter. Listen, instant blog. Substack announced a Twitter-like feature called Notes last week. And so the Musk-led Twitter began retaliating. It blocked creators' ability to embed tweets in Substack posts, banned likes and retweets on tweets with Substack links, and removed the ability to search Substack on Twitter. That's the shit that TikTok did for ages, right? It's it's why I have a YouTube channel, right? With I think it's like at this point in time we're like we're inching up. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate every single one of you, but um with a very like like about 2500 let's say um subscribers which i'm appreciative of but i had 300,000 quote unquote followers not really followers so just people who clicked follow one time i had 300,000 people who clicked but i couldn't reach those people and i couldn't tell them about my youtube channel and i couldn't tell them about my website because every time i try to manage like mention sign up for my newsletter go to my youtube like to divert anything away from TikTok, my account got shadow banned or the comment straight up just got deleted. Is this okay? This is not okay. TikTok did that. And now Elon Musk is doing the same thing. I heard he's also building a factory in China in the middle of everything that's going on right now, right? They're they're making push or the, the, they're trying to push for more like manufacturing jobs to come back to the United States. like. China is being hostile as fuck to America and he's going and he's going to build a factory um, to produce batteries like for homes in China. Like, is he not paying attention? Did he not realize what happened to Jack Ma? And I guess he somehow thinks himself above the law. I don't see the genius in this guy that people keep saying that he is because he bought Twitter, for example, for $40 billion at Y. And now he's pulling the stunt with what happened with Substack. Right. And also trying to charge people for verification badges to the tune of up to a thousand dollars a month. Or is this <laughs> hello? And now that has infected Instagram, which is why one of the reasons why I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like these people don't care about people. They don't 
care. So you, we need to start caring for themselves. I mentioned earlier that there's going to be an emergence of two economies. It's going to be the economy of people who, okay, they go and shop at Shine. And, uh, <laughs> all this plastic stuff that you're getting for like $2. That's literally what a lot of the stuff that you buy from like all these other stores for a lot more money. That's probably what they're getting getting it for and then they mark it up like 400 percent the quality isn't there and it's also been shown to disrupt like shine clothes have been shown to disrupt your hormones for obvious reasons because they're made out of chemicals and plastic right and more and more people on this end are going to go and purchase that stuff and then there are people who are both going to be health conscious but also more wealthy are going to be like maybe we should go back to the way things were and so there's going to be an economy of people who are going to want to eat more natural foods who are going to want to wear more natural clothing who want who are going to want things built out of natural products natural fibers just like essentially live like our ancestors did before our ancestors were called fucking savages right you see how it comes full circle maybe the savages weren't savages after all maybe they knew a thing or two before we were convinced before we had the knowledge that their ways were inferior people walking around with bare feet grounding themselves 24 7 sleeping and in, in, on things that are made from the earth and somehow we were we were sold this bill of goods that all this plastic shit is somehow better and now you're going to see more and more rich people being marketed things healthier foods cleaner foods they already seen it with organic so basically i have to pay more money for you to not spray my food with chemicals and poison i have to pay more money for companies to not poison me you guys see this on my head this came with the shirt it was like the instead of packaging in plastic they just tie the stuff with it i just use it as a headscarf i don't i know that cotton can be a bit absorbent so i'm not going to keep it on it was just for this video i just i have a lot of this stuff i don't know what to do with it my braids and stuff with it. i have no idea what to do with it but at least it's not fucking plastic and it feels good i'm not leaving it on my edges i like my edges <laughs> so, but it just i thought it was a cute little thing there's something to be said about just the natural feel of cotton <laughs> the fabric of our lives but organic though not the shit that they spray because you have to also be mindful just because something is cotton something is 100 percent cotton doesn't mean that they're not using chemicals oh i was shopping on gap uh i didn't buy anything um i saw a shirt it was like 100 percent cotton but then the color it was like a magenta hot pink and then i looked through the description to see if there was anything to say about what it was colored with and whether or not the dyes were like synthetic and nothing because if it was like a natural dye they would have said this is a natural dye they didn't say that shit so you want to tell me that this shirt was grown with organic cotton it was made with organic cotton and then you dye it with toxin <laughs> like does that make any what kind of backwards that is like these people who do this stuff aren't like able to think deeply but we're going to see them because they're going to start you gonna see them like they're going to start greenwashing things right but you have to use your common sense Organic means like it's not like there's no synthetic stuff in it. It's natural, right? Um, so don't buy a magenta hot pink shirt or like a royal blue, whatever the fuck, because it advertises organic, whatever. If there's got artificial coloring, once you put something artificial on it, you can't, it doesn't matter if it was grown organically. You've just destroyed this. Like, think about it. I want to leave you guys with this thought. I wrote this in the group chat, um, on the Telegram group, and um, I think it's worth revisiting. It's a kind of piggyback of what I was talking about on, I think it was a very short podcast, like I think last week, it was about 12 minutes, maybe 13 minutes long, I talked about is the US dollar in trouble. Um, this is what I said in the, in the group. Um, I said, they tell us what they want to happen, so we are then compelled into making it happen. So I've talked about God's souls, right? Fully conscious beings. And then we're working on the series. I'm going to talk about it again. I said, that's what the news is. It compels sleeping gods into actualizing realities that these individuals want. Right? So they say, this is what's going to happen. They don't know that. They're human, just like us. 
what what they can do is mass broadcast something and then if the if the masses of people contained in them contained within them god's souls with the ability to actualize re- realities or i should say with a greater ability to actualize certain realities they believe this stuff they believe what they're being told is going to happen then their beliefs will actualize that reality experience it will collapse that particular wave, wave function so a lot of the time when we see something in the news and they're saying this is inevitable. It's not. They just need to convince you that it's inevitable. Sometimes it doesn't work, like we're seeing with Meta, right? They kept saying like, this is the future, and most people were like, "No, we don't. We don't think so." Hard pass on that, right? But other times it does. You really need to be mindful of that. There are people who are aware of, maybe even on a subconscious level. I'm not saying they're doing consciously, but there are people who are aware of how this reality works and they will manipulate the masses. They use certain tools to manipulate the masses. So I just want you to think about that. So I'll say it again. They tell us what they want to happen so that we are compelled into making it happen. So that is something for you to think about. I have said, I think a couple episodes ago, I talked about how I don't, I don't know if I believe that there's just seven continents and maybe I'm wrong. But there's something about that exercise that opens the mind. If you start to challenge any sort of preconceived ideas, if you start to operate on the fact that like most of us are essentially coasting on outdated quote unquote knowledge. So the knowledge may not have even been accurate in the first place. But if you haven't been in school and you haven't been educating yourself in 20, 15, 20 years, then a lot of the things that you think you know is just essentially just flat out wrong. And even if you have been in school recently, a lot of the things that you've been programmed with is just that programming. You don't really know. So it doesn't, it's not really worth, in the grand scheme of things, arguing with people about anything, to be perfectly honest, because you don't really know. Something to think about. Thanks for listening.